I don't normally do the podcasts. Uh, I know. <laughs> I, I I feel I do feel privileged because I did because when you look for you, you're like, oh, this fella stays under the radar or something brilliant. This is great. I do. I do actually. I I I, I kind of pride myself in staying well under the radar. Um, I think uh, we're in a we're in an age now of you have to be sticking your face in TikTok and Snapchat and all this kind of thing. And I'm kind of, I like to think I'm a bit beyond that. I leave that for the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of stay, I, I kind of stay underground, you know. I, mean, I like. I, mean, I know, like, I know that the, the the brand is way out there and it's popular and whatnot. But I, I myself, I I really stay behind closed doors, you know. Well, it's like, oh, welcome to the podcast, by the way, Darren Murphy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking, we've started. I like that. I like that. Who the hell, who the hell is this fella? Yeah. That's a that's a roll and start. I have done. I have done an, an intro and everything. Because, uh, oh, yeah. but yeah, that, this is this is absolutely powerful. I do. I I like the idea of that that you put. I I personally hate social. But I actually I'm able yeah. to f- mentally detach the face and the silliness that I put up with the reality. You know that kind of way. Like there's yeah. Because yeah. if if I didn't do what I did, I wouldn't be bothered me whole with it. Like you know what I mean? Because yeah, you can get on just fine without it. Like you know. Oh, no, I I I feel the same. I I I leave it to others here who do it. You know. Oh, you're not even on the. Uh, you, I, no. I, I, brilliant. I brilliant. don't even have personal social accounts. So ba- on, Harry, on any platform, Harry yeah. Baby is out front, and that's that's the bottom that's line. That's it, and and that's not even managed by me, you know. So that's uh, I stay well away from it. I like, it. yeah, I like it. The you were just saying the last time we met, I swung over to your place. And I mean, if weird could meet weird, like, you know what I mean? I love, I loved your place. Like, and I turn yeah. it up with that ridiculous car. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's God, I won't forget that. Yeah. That was some motor actually. Yeah. I read, yeah. It was back in another time when I, I was involved with a company at a small share in a company where we used to do experiences. Right. I was so going we, to say, how, do, how does a person end up with a yellow Lamborghini? Yeah. Yeah. You don't hear yourself <laughs> well, saying that every day. I was a fella from tip end up with a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not a yellow Massey. Uh, I, I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> a yellow yeah. Lamborghini. Although, in fact, I had to hilariously one morning there was a fuse or something gone in it and it wouldn't start. And I was over, I it actually, it's I'd stopped at a guy's house because he was near the parents' place, he's a farmer. And I knew it was going in for a service a couple of days later. And if <laughs> I pulled in and he was like, just lovely, you know, she didn't know what he was looking at, like, and or chatting away, it's made for a cup of tea. So we left it in the yard or whatever, and I went in for had a cup of tea, and we came out, and no way would it start. No fucking way would it start. And I stopped because the fuse had been dodgy up until then. He had to drag it back to the parents' place with a Ford fucking tractor. It was. I wish we actually got a picture of it. That this fucking Lambo getting pulled by a Ford yeah. seven six ten or whatever, and your man <laughs> delighted with himself, elbow out the window, like fucking pull it. <laughs> oh, class, class. It was a, a hairy baby moment. Very much so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. I, where did because you went from I I love people probably don't don't fully grasp the notion of the idea of hairy baby is so yeah. It's it's what's well, for the want of a better phrase it's almost anti political in a way it's it's talks about it's it it kind of shines a light on when times were simpler and a right bit of crack and sidesteps yeah. all the harsh shit we're dealing with nowadays like. Yeah, you know it is. It it's there's a sense of devilment in there as well. You know, yes. it's um, it's it's kind of. I suppose to to give it the long and short of it, really, how it all kind of came about was, I was, outside a hairy baby. Like this is 15 years ago. I was a sound engineer and I worked in Dublin. That was my day job. Right. Above the sticks, or should I say, above the big smoke? I'm in the sticks, but. Uh, the the lads I used to work with, they used to call me culty all the time. Of course, yeah, yeah. But I hated that. I it just really used to rub me up the wrong way. Like because they, they used to kind of say it in a kind of an offensive manner, like you know, kind of taking the mick. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I know, kind of nowadays, the culty is viewed upon slightly differently. I I lay a small bit of claim to. I'm, I'm just gonna say my my I, wife. My wife bought the first thing she ever bought me when we got together was a culty t shirt from yeah, Harry so, Baby. You know, I, I put the word culty on a t shirt and it kind of softened it a little bit. You know, it kind of kind of took the sting out of it because that's, that's kind of how it all started. I, 
I got so sick of being called Culchy by these lads that I just went off and got a t-shirt printed with the word Culchy on it. <laughs> so they couldn't call me Culchy anymore because, you know, it wasn't, it, I wasn't looking at it as being offensive. You're like the Rosa Parks of country lads. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you took back that word and made it ours. I did, yeah, I did. So what, what, what happened was I, I used to DJ at night as well, a lot. And up in the clubs, you know. Yeah. And, uh, unbeknownst to me at the time of course we're like you know dublin was full of culties yeah so i used to wear my i used to wear my culty t-shirt when i was djing so i found consistently like you know people would come up to you and can, can you put on dr dre or whatever the hell and where did you get the culty t-shirt <laughs> so after a couple of months anyway it was a case of can you play some dr dre and Where'd you get the culture t-shirt? Oh, well, what size and color are you? I have a box of them here. <laughs> Stop, what a cute whore. So I was doing a bit of a Dell boy on it and I had a box of t-shirts kind of under the decks, so to speak. Oh, so I, I was flogging t-shirts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that. That is so brilliantly organic so, and yeah. cute whore. Like, that so I would sell t-shirts every week. And what happened then was it led on to, I started doing color versions of them so i would do a, a a yellow and green version for kerry and a red and white version for cork and and then you get people ask have you got a leads room one you know yeah of course like yeah yeah you know, you'll need to gather up a couple of more lads that's not that popular so, <laughs> so, I, do a print run. But, uh, so I had an abundance of cork ones and <laughs> but yeah it led on from that and after that i started putting Started putting area codes on T-shirts. You know, we were still very much in the in the the, the dawn of the mobile phone at the time, yes, so we yeah, were yeah. still very much landline driven. So it was, I would put plus three five three oh two one, white writing on a red T-shirt for Cork, and plus three five three oh six six, yellow on green for Kerry, and Beautiful. and that I started selling them as well, and that knocked on then to. People from Leitrim asking, have you got whatever? So how, how how did you make the jump from selling it under the decks to actually well, I, that was that was um I the girl I was going out with at the time who I'm married to now, she's from Cork and and she changed jobs to a company she was working with who had a base down here and she's from here. So I was kind of given an ultimatum at the time was, you know, either move down or, or, or lose me forever. That kind of lark, you know? Yeah. And I was, I was wrecked. I'll be honest with you. I was wrecked because working as a sound engineer and DJing three or four nights a week on the trot, yeah. I, I was, after a few years of that, I was exhausted, burnt out. And, and I thought there's a bit of an opportunity here to kind of downsize and move down a little bit from, from Dublin. I'm from Kerry originally. So my folks were down there. Yeah. So I, t I thought, look, Cork is kind of, it's a nice little balance between the two, isn't it? Like yeah. it's kind of, Cork isn't exactly a massive city. It's it's a, it's a big town, you know, so, but it was a nice move away from the Dublin scene. So I moved down here and I took a job with a, an audio visual company down in Cork. That didn't work out. So after a month, I found myself unemployed and I was DJing and I thought, Jesus, there was a bit of a bit of a thing in those t-shirts yeah 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 so yeah start, i started kind of learning how to print t-shirts myself and i had a shed and it's real kind of you know the way you see those um nowadays you see those things on on twitter and things um how it all started and how it's going you know those like like by like literally by that you're you're talking your way through it here now at the minute like without without being a dose because some of them lads are fair fucking doses <laughs> like <laughs> like but that that that's kind of how I see because I I I was just in the small little shed, printing T-shirts, and lugging them around to a few shops in Cork, and seeing if they would take them off my hands, you know, on a sale or return basis. And yeah, I had a few more ideas and and like because I, I was into the DJing and that at the time I was doing these kind of DJ type T-shirts which were shite, like, and <laughs> but I had these kind of Irish ones then, like you know, so I had like sick as a small hospital and and. Culchy was one, and and uh, 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 who said mass? And did you turn off the immersion? I had kind of couple of hairy baby classics at the time. Those were the ones that the shops kept looking for, right? And they didn't want any of the fucking DJ ones. So they just said, "I want any of that rubbish." So I kind of figured out pretty quickly that there was a 
Oh, gap in the market. <laughs> but see, this is this is what like I mean, you know, you'd, you nowadays you'd see these guys and they're given mentorship on this kind of stuff, and you're literally organically going, Hurrah! yeah. Do you I, know? I yeah, loved. You know, I love hearing that. Like, is that? I uh, know there was no there was no mentoring and all that stuff. Um, none, nothing like that. I went to I went to the enterprise boards and and the, the LEOs and places like that, and they shot me down as quick as you could think uh, like the banks shot me down uh there's a stenciled quote on our office downstairs on the wall which says um you want to sell t-shirts on the internet are you sure about that would you not try and think of something else brilliant that's a that's a direct quote from aib brilliant 2000, 2006 when i was asking for 15 grand Stop. To start to start <laughs> baby, baby yeah yeah Ah, they kind of laughed over the counter at me, these kind of silver haired fellas. And who, you know, the, I, I suppose when you think about it as well, though, Tom, back in 2005, 2006, the idea of, of e commerce websites was. Yeah, I'm just putting really myself. Around. I was in Cork around that time too. And I remember I'd go in on a Saturday morning, like for, you know, you get a, free, a nice fresh t shirt or a shirt or whatever. And it didn't dawn on me to look on my phone or break no, out no, said laptop no. like, like you know it, it no. I suppose it didn't it you didn't know, you... happen no and and I suppose lucky for me at the time the, the demand for those kind of t-shirts was growing I had a bank of ideas and lucky for me at the time my brother um uh, is a designer a web designer and he was building websites at the time kind of messing around with them and, and he suggested he builds me a a kind of a small enough e-commerce website. Oh, brilliant. To sell online. Yeah. So I ran with the idea. It cost me two grand at the time. Huge money for me at the huge, time. Huge, huge. Yeah, it was like... big, big money at the time, but it, it got me up online as a, as a, as a web shop. And it kind of, it went from there. I, I, from a marketing point of view, I, I was kind of lucky as well because I done up this kind of mad press release about, uh, how this hairy baby was found in the depths of Perry. <laughs> <laughs> that was going at some stage we were going to get there, but I'm so glad yeah. we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, people had, be, had come from miles around to see this phenomenon that was, you know, down <laughs> in Southwest Kerry, where I was at the time. But, uh, and the very last line on the, the the press release was actually, no, it's a new website selling T-shirts. Have a look. And, and I sent it out to all the newspapers and they all ran it. Really? Yeah, they all ran, all the major newspapers ran the story, a um, couple of pictures of the T-shirts, and immediately the website kind of got a bit of a hit. And, and, and I suppose it was a good five or six years before anybody kind of got involved in the scene. And, you know, before I started seeing, you know, like-minded websites popping up, selling branded T-shirts and stuff, you know, um, so I would have had a good five or six years head start before anybody got into it. And at the time as well, I was very brand focused. It was all about the brand, the identity, the brand and, yeah. and the color scheme and the theme as well for what we were selling. It had to be fundamentally Irish. Yes. And as far removed from the top of the morning to your twee, Bilgara stuff that you could get. God so it was yeah. Irish t-shirts for Irish people of a certain generation. And, you know, the Americans wouldn't have gotten it. Not you, at you all. Just had no, to no. be Irish, you know. So it it went from there, and it grew. It grew quite quickly, actually. At the time, around you know 2009 and 2010, it started to really take off, and, and started employing people and looking for a build, bigger premises, and, and it just it kind, of, it kind of went from there. But there must now. there must be like you know like as a friend of mine, he's a butcher, and I remember giving him a contract for barbecuing at a comedy festival before i was going barbecuing and i gave him two two days to get me a supply of stuff yeah i says look i'm getting giving you the contract we can give it to a big crowd up here in galway or he went fuck that and he literally he got the stuff together and you knew he worked through the night like you know yeah. what i mean yeah. and that makes me think it like like there must have been ferocious orders coming in going that's where we're buckling down here or you're by yourself even early doors i'd say just going i got by myself by myself for a long time yeah before I started employing people, yeah. Um, I, I moved my office to, out of the garage, you know, to a, a kind of slightly bigger unit in, in Kinsale. 
uh, just as I can sail. And that's when I employed my first staff member, you know. Yeah. But we've since moved from there up to Cork City. So we're in, you know, we're in Cork City now for the last 10 years. And who was doing the, your, like your artwork early doors then? I was. Were you? Yeah, everything. A- absolutely everything from packaging to t-shirt design to the type of t-shirt I was using. I was, I was really anal about all that kind of stuff, you know, so brand focused and, and I needed the shirt. I'm still using the same t-shirt as I was 15 years ago. They're a bloody good t-shirt. I tell you one yeah. thing, like they can take some battern. Yeah, like, they, and they do. And, and that's kind of, that's to my detriment as well, because I, I know, I've, I know. I've often had customers come in our door, you know, saying, Jesus, I need to get a t-shirt because this one here is finally given up the ghost. I, I got it seven years ago and I'm thinking, Christ, return customer after seven years. I need to make the quality worse. Yeah, I know. And <laughs> get them back quicker. But no, that's the way it is. Like, they they but stand I, up. I think when there's that, I'm a firm believer when there's that kind of level of, of, I suppose, quality put into a product, regardless of the actual bill, you know, yeah. is that that filters through everything. Do you know, like, yeah. and people will always come back regardless, like, sure, I've, I've 10 of them, you know, yeah, of uh, the only things fading on them are, you know, maybe I ripped them on a fence or something or, yeah. or I've swelled out too, too much, like the culture yeah. one. Yeah. She yeah. won't go on, the yeah. culture one won't go on anymore. You know, but it was, yeah. it was going good till, till I, till I outgrew my t-shirt, you know, that kind of way. Yeah. So, yeah. That's it, been the focus all, always, you know, and it's it's yeah grown grown from there. So, um, but it's changed dramatically the business, you know, over the years. Yeah, how have you how have you kept ahead? Like, because you have kept ahead of everybody. I know you're you obviously have an amazing bank of knowledge and stuff when it comes to the fun nostalgia of the things that everybody yeah, yeah. loves from the nineties and whatnot, and even earlier, or even for further on, further closer yeah, well, that, to that. that that kind of stems from me you see that yeah a lot of that stuff is is because i'm the age i am i relate to the 80s and 90s you know yeah um so because that's the year i would have grown up in so a lot of the ideas on there are very nostalgia focused but you know where do you go from there is kind of has kind of always been my my thoughts um back through the years it's going to come a time when i think you know, the client base that I have who are buying all these shirts now years ago are from that era. What happens when they get a bit older? Will you sell to their children? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, you have big baby range and, and, and you carry on a nostalgia on the baby range. But outside of that, then we're now, you know, we're involved in licensing now as well. So like we license a lot of brand, different brands like Father Ted and and you know, we, we do a lot of white label service as well for other brands where we, we print for them. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so we, we do that kind of thing as well. So that's where your longevity is in, in, in the business. There's, we, there's two businesses running from Harry Baby now. We have another business called T-Shopper, which is contract printing. Right, I see it over your shoulder there. I was going to ask, what is T-Shopper? Oh, Jesus, I forgot where I was. No, um, you, that, you're really smart in branding. You know, you're just a genius. You're like, just, <laughs> just over the right shoulder. Just have tea shop with there in clear, clear writing. <laughs> Genius. That's <laughs> that's um yeah, that's a branch off of Harry Baby. So it's it's same quality, but it's just printing for other brands. Um uh so it's contract printing. Wasn't it lucky that you found like obviously you're a creative being an artist, you know, you you were, you know, you're a sound engineer, but also you're a DJ. Weren't you fair lucky to have found something that you were loved and were brilliant at you know relatively early doors to a degree like well well, you know i'd often think about that um like i i loved my job right yeah yeah. absolutely adored working as a sound engineer uh, recording music and all that that went with that i adored it and that was a job for me and i i that was my job for life i i fell into this this grew so quickly at the time that I had to make a, des- a, a decision, you know, yeah, okay. it, it was, it was the day job or, or, you know, start this hairy baby thing and take it seriously. And, and, and so it got to that point where the intention was always talking about, was always, uh, you'd have this e-commerce store and you'd come home in the evening from the day job and you might have a few orders, you print them, pack them up and bring them to the post office the next day. But it was never, 
from the very day it launched, you know, it warranted nearly full time work on my part. So I had to give up the job. But it, it was it was it tapped so perfectly. I know like my one sister in particular, she absolutely adores the idea of co- comedy nostalgia from the, like the 90s and, yeah. and the early 2000s and stuff like that. And before before I was even with my now wife at the time, like all of us were wearing hairy baby. She was like, well, there's a perfect gift because there's a smile and it's a talking point straight away. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah, that's that's what we, we're so heavily focused on the gift market. Like, you know, it, it's like the end, you know, December, November for us is insane. I can only imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very baby stuff for gifts, you know, but we've it's, you know, we do socks and all kinds of things now. It's just it's just really branched off that way. But um, it, it, it's. No, it does. It does make for a great gift and, and it's. I've always tried to keep the the ethos of of being non offensive. You know, the, the, you can be funny without having to be offensive. Yes. Um, you you know you you you'll know yourself um, on the on the comedy scene. I I I, I, I think there's nothing worse than seeing a stand up comic who just relies purely on swear words. Yeah, yeah, to yeah, get yeah. The joke. If they told the same joke without a swear word, would it get a laugh? Well, the swear words are are they're a luxury. If you overuse them, they become inert. Exactly. You know what exactly. I mean? Yeah. There's a perfect time for a deliciously yeah. placed swear word that everybody in the room can agree. But if you yeah. if you're sticking it in all over the place, it's dead I, in the water. I, I find that we we don't need to use offensive or, or crude language or, or or anything like that to get the same joke across. Yes, of course. And it's you know. Um, yeah, it's just trying to keep it fun. That's that's how I, I, I like to kind of keep it. You know, it, it has to be fun. You have to know it's a hairy baby t-shirt when you see it on somebody coming down the road. Yeah, 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 that yeah, yeah. Too. Yeah, because even I had, I thought about it because I, I was in with you and you're like, your your staff are the happiest people you'll ever meet. Like, I mean, not <laughs> only, not only have you set up like, what well, you'd like a PlayStation or something as well? I've had you a PlayStation, I imagine that, and a table. Yeah, no, we have, we have a, we have a. Uh, I don't know if you'd be able to see it actually. Um, you probably would if I move my camera. The uh, that's our kind of. I don't know. Can you see that's a Yeah, kinda, yeah. Kinda okay, so there's, here, there's so everything. There's... <laughs> yeah, it's just over the top. They don't need that at all. <laughs> but. That's too much. So take all that away because it makes them lazy. <laughs> but at the no, same, it's just, it's just um, you know, it's not Google. You know, don't get me wrong. It, it, there's a day's work to be done as well. So, but it's um, they need to. It can't be all work. You know, you, you let them chill out a little bit as well. But that was the vibe I got. Like, is that there? Yeah. There is that there. Like, but everybody seemed to be on their job regardless. And it, you know, there didn't seem a a white fear in their eyes as you walked around either like you know no, what I mean I, to be honest I'm, I'm I'm hardly ever in the workshop um they, they don't see me an awful lot at all well maybe now actually um we're quite low on staff but uh that's just the times we're in nobody has staff yeah is that that's, unbelievable you know, very hard yeah yeah very very hard yeah so but you know we get over it like we do everything do, do you, like is there do you have how well roundtable meetings or is it typically coming from you know what it'd be a class one that's you know it, it, it used to be kind of structured but we found that that was too forced now and it would come ban- across in, in the gag too wouldn't it like yeah, yeah now it's just banter you know you'll all the lads will always say something like and and you know i could go into the workshop and one of them might say jesus you know what would be gas <laughs> i've been collared more times because of a t-shirt you made for me it was um oh. I know the one. Do you? Coach Coachella. No, not no. well, yes. That one actually immediately I was asked where you I could get it, but it was the because we'll get onto the, the controversy of that one. Oh. but it was the too cool for school one in Irish. Oh, Roku altered and skull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got collared by a couple of Gwail Gores from from uh Donny Gall. Yeah. And they were they were lambasting me basically. I was like, okay, relax for one. You know what I mean? Spelling, was it the spelling of Qualta or something like that? Or? No, it was it was that they didn't agree with it that it was actually a word. I says, well, excuse me, I says, but as the creators has a Gwail Go friend 
who he refers everything to and i'm going with that if that's yeah, okay and it you is, know it, it is a word yeah 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 because I, I then again i've i've asked friends since uh he's a comic jer staunton his name he's a great girl from uh, mayo and yeah. he was like oh no it, no no that's a word that is absolutely yeah, yeah. the correct word yeah 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 um, maybe, it isn't, maybe it isn't a word in donegal I would imagine <laughs> they were or they were cranky anyway. Do you know what I mean? They were like anorex ruin everything, Dara. And these uh, were anorex for Irish. You know, that kind of way. They were like, no, it's yeah, our no. little gang. And do, do you know, protest like it's almost like the lady does protest too much. Yeah. Do you know these people who go, oh, we want it all to be spoken by everybody, but secretly we love the fact that we're the only people speaking it. You know, yeah. these freaks like <laughs> well, we get picked up on on. You know, the, the, the content that we put on the shirts is, it's not translatable to English in a way, like it is English, but it's, it's, they're Irishisms. Yeah. Half of them don't make a lot, an awful lot of sense anyway, but we, sometimes we get, people love, people love to correct nowadays. They really do. They love to be the ones who call you out and say that's wrong and. Ah, sure. What can you do? Well, you're going to get your pedantic Patrick's all the time. Ah, like. Yeah, yeah. There's that, I, yeah, yeah. A, a great one, and, and I love the artistic creation of Min, Minosum. I love yeah. that one, like, yeah, it's like, well, we, we just bang two words together here. That's it. It's exactly what it was. Yeah. And it's it, it's good in a way as well because of what it symbolizes and, yeah. and stylized in the form of a Superman logo. It adds another dimension to it. it it's, it's quite a good shirt. Yeah, it is. It's the, and it's I, always popular. I've definitely told this at some stage on the podcast before, but one time I had put up a post on whatever f- format of so- social media a few years back about Coach Coachella, and I'd put two buses, the bus air and buses beside each yeah. other. And I'll never forget it. I was a Sunday, I was on a film set, and Dara messaged me going, uh, by any chance you're wearing a white T-shirt right now? I was like, well, that's that's the oddest question I've ever gotten from a man. I was like, why? And it was a certain well, uh, I suppose, well-known public figure at the time had taken said joke and made it her own. And Darrow was having none of this. It was like, nah, nah. Yeah. So, yeah. Was, so you had some, I had a guy take a photograph of me on set and you superimposed. You Like yeah. in half an hour, you had two buses drawn and superimposed yeah. on a t-shirt and then like kind of Maria backdated it gone throw yeah. so from <laughs> it was the coolest <laughs> thing anybody's it's like standing up for the little guy it was like class yeah. it's class can't have that can't have that yeah you know and we get we, we but we get that a lot um i gave you that idea um uh, a lot do you yeah like and they don't give us that idea because <laughs> there are irishisms and a lot of them are older than you or i yeah of course yeah yeah, yeah. They've been around for so long, but I don't know, people, a lot of people think that because they say such a phrase so many times, maybe in their head they thought that they originally came up with it. Oh, I've had people tell me stories that yeah. were my stories that I told them a year previous, but then some yeah, comedians yeah, are completely yeah, yeah. mental too. They'll come back with things. You're like, mm. no, that's definitely happened to me. <laughs> we don't take design submissions for, for that very reason, because um, it always causes controversy. Oh. Yeah. Of course, you yeah. You take an idea from somebody and you put it up as a shirt, somebody else will lay claim to it and it causes awful friction. So we just don't and we never have accepted ideas from people unless the ideas are insanely good. Like, Well, you're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that was just a moment of pure soundness. It was like, no, no, we need to knock this on the head. Now we can't yeah, be having we, this. Yeah. Like, No, can't, can't allow that, yeah. So, but we, I did the half hour thing you said, said about doing the spinning the idea up and sending it back to you quickly. That's something that's worked very, very well for us over the years is we yeah. pride ourselves in doing what we call reactive t-shirts. An event might happen. Right. And we can spin a shirt up in, in 20 minutes and have it up online. The system that we use for printing, you see, is it's very advanced. It's called a print on demand. Um, direct to garment printing. So we um, we don't have to commit something to print until it sells, <clears throat> which is a great system. Right. So we can load our website with a load of graphics. Um, and, you know, if, if, a, if an idea doesn't sell, we just take it down. And if it sells, 
we just print it every time somebody buys one. So there's an, all our shirts on our shelves are all blank. Right. And they lend themselves to loads of different um, graphics. <coughs> ah. So in, in, in the event that something happens on social, and the beauty about the brand being where it is, is we actually, we actually get told quite a lot by our customers that we should be doing something. Right. For yes. example, you remember the Oireachtas Golf Society? Yes. Well, yeah. You know, we would get messages on social telling us this has happened, this event is happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you guys should be on it. And it, I, we've even seen it, people tweeting, waiting for the hairy baby t-shirt in three, <laughs> yeah. two, one. Yeah. I've, I've genuinely I've seen, seen that. that I've seen that. Go on. And it then is... we'll, we'll, we'll spin up a shirt and pop it up and you'll, you'll catch the press on it and, and you'll get a spike in traffic and you'll sell a load of shirts and then you'll print them the next day. But it, you know what, doesn't it, it, it lends itself very similar to how, uh, I suppose, Water for Whispers in the same way. Yeah. You know what I mean? They were like, geez, we have to get on this thing immediately. Yeah. Or people are going, waiting for Whispers to do something on this too. Like, Yeah. And isn't it funny? That's why we partner with Whispers. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, I have two or three t-shirts of the Whispers. Like yeah, so. one of my favorite ones is the, the, the cow wants to be eaten because my very good friend, Jerry oh, McBride, stop. wrote that article. Right. And and you made it so it's like okay this oh is jerry the- yeah yeah jesus oh yeah 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 that's hands down one of the best articles they have and then or jesus not coming back by the looks of it at mitz vatican <laughs> there's there's <laughs> but the, you know the, the their most popular shirt that we do outside of the leo the leak one that's going on at the moment um <laughs> is the uh it's just very simple text based one uh and it just says jesus you can't say anything these days and there is no truer slogan out there because oh, you just wow. can't you just can't say anything these days now I, I we noticed that ourselves in um content we would produce for 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 shirts uh whereas five or six years ago everything was fair game yep nowadays we have to be uber careful what we put up we have to analyze everything we put up for fear that it'll offend what's your testing board then for say let's this is funny right this is funny yeah it's funny Art. to all of us but once you put it up then somebody will probably take offense to it really like, yeah, what, yeah. like what's the obscurity what's the most I, obscures that you can think of that t-shirt well, well, art design that we are going this this can't offend anybody surely well, 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 you should say that. Yeah, like I can think of some of the ones that that would have offended people and we've probably taken them down since. But one that really um, escapes me is the one of the very first Harry Baby T-shirts, which was Who Said Mass? Yeah. I've had people take offense to that shirt. And for the life of me, I can't understand why. <clears throat> wow. Cannot understand why it's it's mocking church apparently but they never took offense to the baby cheeses one and and uh, uh you know christ on a bike and and, and oh no they did yeah that, people took offense to that one actually um but they had uh they had oh, hold you were in the highest as well and you Jesus, highest, yeah. yeah yeah um sick as a plane to lords we got a <laughs> i can a- i can see why a few owl what senior Karens would have a whinge with that but, one you like, know, like, but it's still funny it's still funny and it's still something somebody says like uh, well you see this is the, the the argument against it is okay I understand that it, it can it can be offensive to some people the likes of sick as a plane to Lourdes um, you know some of the comments we would have had on it would have been you know people go to Lourdes and you know they don't come back or, or whatever or, or they, they're terminally ill and and I accept that and that's all okay fine but it goes back to the f- mere fact that we didn't create that slogan it's we a design guy that anyway slogan. yeah that slogan's been around since i was a child yep you know um same as sick as a small hospital that was around since i was a child but it can't be deemed as being offensive to all the people who are in hospital <laughs> <laughs> you know and and it's it's but you just don't know what's offensive and what isn't anymore. Like 
we we uh, I think it was last month we had a, a man bought a T-shirt, uh, rough as a bear's arse. Yeah. For a guy who has who's in hospital with colon cancer, that is no word of a lie. Mm-hmm. Absolutely no word of a lie. He came in and he specifically asked for that T-shirt. That serious banter between he, mates. He reckoned his friend would would get great fun out of it. Beautiful. So you just don't know anymore, and that now now when we come up with something, we we have to kind of analyze it for. Is it potentially going to cause offence? And if we have a policy where we try our best not to offend, then maybe it can't make it up as a shirt. And then it's tough sometimes, you know, because you could sit on a winner and go, oh, my God, that's hilarious. And, but somebody's probably going to get offended by it. Like, I hate to say it, like, but, you know, are we in a generation of cancel, cancel culture and whatnot? And, and people love to put you down. And Yeah, this, and because you're an entity now and it's not like you're speaking to... They'd yeah. never say, like, they'd never call over to your shop and say it's your face. Do you know what I mean? They would never, because you are an entity, hairy baby is, you know, it's a, it's just a thing now. It's a thing. And people go, yeah. well, I can just shout at the thing. And I, the suppose, thing- I suppose so, yeah. So, so look, that's, that's, that's just the point in time that we're at. Um, it's, it's, dif- more, it's more difficult these days to, you can't just throw up a T-shirt I think it's snapping back the other way. I've had um, I have a lot of examples come to come to me in the last couple of months of youngsters, 15, 16 year olds right. who are to other side of they're easily offended and they're okay. going, what? I don't yeah. get any of this. Oh, what? Yeah. No. You know, so because I don't think people are genetically. I, I genuinely don't think people are genetically made up to be that soft that easily that easily offended it's a it's just a fashion right now it's just a fashion to just yeah. go you know what i That's i need a thing yeah. you know, tamagotchis were a fashion and everybody had one at one stage yeah. now people have easily offended opinions yeah but ironically i would i would well i'd absolutely 100 percent because i do live comedy i would say it is about 0.5 percent of any population that's actually offended and everybody else is just yeah. worried about upsetting them because they just shout really loud you know that's, what i mean it, it, it dare to shout the loudest you see so that's um but look it, it's we get over it and you know we drive on it's just plenty never never seems to be a shortage of ideas that's the thing about this business it, it's i like i would have started it with a five or six slogans and never in my wildest dreams that i think i'd be close on a thousand at this stage you know over the Is years it? I, I was going to ask around, that there's probably around it's probably around 200 or so up on the website, but hundreds have come down over the years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've either been of a moment or, 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 you know, you can, some of the stuff I would have done has come off the site because it's gone back too far that it's now, it's beyond retro, it's gone into vintage. Yes, yeah, yeah. And maybe yeah, that yeah. might come back in, in yeah. three or four years time, but that's the likes of, we used we used to license a lot of stuff from RTE years ago, so we would have had um, we would have had a lot of the logos for the older TV shows like yes. Nighthawks and and Murphy's Micro Quizm and Blackboard Jungle, um, yeah. Joe Maxi, uh, The Den, uh, things like that. We would have done the logos for. We would have recreated the logos and put them on t-shirts as, as a kind of a retro shirt but that got to a stage about five or six years ago where it had surpassed retro and moved into vintage so right it, it, it went beyond the generation so in other words what what got it for me was our shop downstairs we would have had um 12 by 12 canvas frames of loads of prints on the wall and we had a load of five or six, 20 somethings were in with somebody's parents or something. They were looking around the shop and they didn't know who uh, Crow and Judge um, were from Wanderley Wagon. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. They didn't know who those characters were. To me, they were iconic. Yeah. But they had no idea who they were. They didn't know who Bosco was. And Stop. Bosco's still around, Bosco's still around like, but, yeah. which surprised me, but anyway, all it said to me was, I think it's time to bring that stuff down. 
Yes, yeah, because yeah. Because it's not appealing to a certain generation anymore. So we just move on. Yeah. You know, so that all that stuff would have come down off the site over years and many more like it. We would have done licensed stuff like with the likes of, of do you remember Sneaky Animation? And yes, yeah, 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 yeah. That, yeah, came yeah. To it, that stopped and it died off. And so we've done a lot of that over years. It's moved on. It, we've done it for a period. It's kind of, these kind of things tend to have a lifespan. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So these kind of viral hits, they, they have a lifespan and then they they stop and you move on and you you bring on something else. And we would have done, we do a huge amount of that stuff over the years, you know. You were always brilliant for, for would elevating. I mean, I mean, it's a business, it's a business after all, but it is, it elevates yeah. like people from the comedy community, the likes of, I, I did, did you, did you partner up with Aoife Dooley for a while? Oh yes, Aoife. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I, mean, I, I, if I, if I remember correctly, I, I think it was me. I think I told, it was. Yeah. I think it was you introduced us actually. Yeah. Yeah. We did uh, your one Nikita range for her way back. Wow, well, way back. Jeez, yeah. yeah. But um, um, I'm delighted to see um, Aoife's. Oh, strength to strength. Oh, yeah. Jesus, her stuff is great. And she's got books out and doing her own merch now, which is fabulous, you know. So more power to her, like. Yeah. But yeah, we do. We do. We, we, we link up with people over the years. And we're, we've got. Uh, we've two more coming online in the next month, but I can't mention who they are until we sign it up. But there are of two, course, yeah, two yeah. Irish illustrators um, of fairly good notoriety. Their their artwork's fabulous. So, but like what the, what that really does too. First, say the likes of Eva, it gives a, it gives an awful platform of confidence too to go. Oh, hold on one second, a well established, you know, well branded company thinks I'm worthy. You know what I mean? Like thinks I'm yeah. worthy at least partnering up like and it kicks on somebody then like that stuff definitely helps. You know, and well, we it would be, we're we're what'll probably go down well soon enough is we've just we've invested heavily in, in machinery recently. So we're going to be introducing a, a new on demand system, hopefully by the end of July, um, where we will be offering a service to have your own shop on Harry Baby. So it'll appeal to a lot of independent artists. So we will fulfill their orders for them. In other words, they can house t-shirt designs on Harry Baby. I'm so, I'm so glad you said that and because I'd love uh, I'm ch a lot of my, um, I'm changing a lot of my logos and stuff like that. And right. I have mine stored, but like they're an American crowd. Um, Why? Because you know, of there was there was nobody in Ireland to do it. This is exactly why we're and, doing it. Um, so we can we can provide this service now. I mean, we're we're, we're as good as not better than any of those uh, American sites that are providing that service. So we have the full fulfillment package here. So we would be, we would happily have Buckshot up on on Harry Baby um, that's your, your merch products, and we would fulfill the orders for you. So you don't have to buy any inventory. That's amazing because that yeah. was the that was the whole thing. It was like it's not it's not Teespring. I can't even remember who the uh, T Republic is who I'm with. Yeah. And while they it, it they it was the hassle free freeness of it because I'm like yeah. I you know I'm not I don't have the time to be packaging up t shirts. Yeah. But I always there was always a guilt in that. It was like ah, I'm not Irish either. You know that kind of way. It was, yeah. But there was nobody doing it. So it was to that level of. But then you're getting you're getting stuff like mugs going out to Irish lads who are in. You know Trinidad and Tobago, and you're like, well, that's yeah. cool. But if I could go and your guess who's doing the new logo for me, only Eva Dooley. So ah, it's please. like this yeah. is serendipitous if ever if ever it happens. Ah, there we go. It has to be done. So yeah, we'll we'll chat about that and we'll get that sorted for you, no problem at all. We'll hopefully roll that out now very very soon. But we'll be opening it up to to the illustration community in 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 Ireland as well for the likes of your your your. Irish illustrators, you know, to try and get them on board. I love it. I, I love that notion. And I think two Irish people as a result kind of go, you know what, there's more to this because I've gotten messages of people going, do you know when that uh, T-shirt is arriving, Tom? And I'm going, I, yeah. don't, I, I fucking don't. I don't. I'm sorry. The thing and you don't. And, and they're paying huge shipping from America and, and you have all that as well. So, no, we, we, we'll we kill it now and we, once we get this up and running. 
Like we're already doing it for brands um, as a white label service. So it's in the background. Yeah. We don't, it's not advertised uh, and they prefer it like that. And that that's fine too. That's, that'll be a service also where it just, it goes out in a blank mailer and it's full of flyers from different. Well, I know, well, personally, I would absolutely, I would prefer for people to have, to know that there was an association with Harry Baby, like, you know, yeah, that kind and, of way. And like, not, no, and, and some do. So it, that that's like, we've just, live there now from last week ago are, are two of the go loud podcasts um stall it and talking bollocks yes yes brilliant they're, they're both on hairy baby now brilliant as as of last week so their their merch is up on our site well, I, now. i'll uh there's um a very good friend of mine uh, those conspiracy guys um and yeah. they sell a lot of merch, but he's he's with an American company, and he's yeah, like, like that's "Where's what we're where's the Irish?" So much of this, yeah, they're selling to Irish audience, and they're shipping it from America, and and Jesus, the the football or like the the the, the distance alone, you know, oh, ridiculous product, and and all of our products are are fully organic, and and you know we use we do, we're as sustainable as we can possibly be, so it's all a plus. Well, I can testify to the, as I said at the top of the show, about the t-shirt quality. They will, you, you will outgrow your t-shirt before your t-shirt outgrow. It's like those big lighters. They, they, they advertised, I remember once, it was the most hilarious advert. It was like, you lose them before they run out. <laughs> it was like. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that before, but it's, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I won't take. I know you're at work. I won't take up any more of your time. So this is brilliant to find out what's what's uh, what's coming up next for. Yeah, uh, so that's that's, um, that's the next stage now. At the moment, is that we roll out this on-demand service. Um, so yeah, full 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 printing service for for different brands or anyone who's who's looking to get into into that side of things who doesn't want to carry their own stock. And we can integrate with your own website as well if you have your own store it's kind of perfect for you can have your own instagram shop and you know it's it just means that you don't have to bother fulfilling orders and printing stuff or going to our printers and shipping it out yourself and dealing with customer service and all that headache is all removed and you you get your you set your benchmark price on the website then so you're you did you dictate your own margin that kind of way yeah so yeah yeah it's all good it's all positive we I've been looking at it for quite a while, but we didn't have the infrastructure in place to, to roll it out, but we do now. So, yeah, we can rival any of the other brands that are doing it abroad. I love it. I no absolutely problem. love it. That's, that gives me, gives me those warm, warm feeling inside. It's like, great, great. <laughs> Finally, somebody is doing it. This, yeah. yeah. Well, we had to, because, yeah, there is nobody doing it here. And there's plenty of talented people here who should have their own merch. Yes, that's the thing. Like, there's a, there's a lot of talented, creative people. Like, yeah. they're really, really, yeah. Yeah, I love it. I I'm love very it. excited about these two that we've got coming on board now in the next three to four weeks. But I, I loved, I'd love to be able to say it, but I can't. But I, I love their stuff. Well, I'll put all One of them is a collab with Harry Baby, actually. Um, so it's, it's we're taking some of the Harry Baby designs and we're bringing them to a whole new era. Yeah, it, it, it's right, right, right. So this is yeah. almost like you know when when you see uh, Wonder Woman when she went back to 1980. This is the <laughs> this is the same thing, like only a new year. We're, we're, oh, we're giving it a bit of a twist. It's it's very dynamic. The, the, the designs are incredible. They're full, full color print designs on your shirt, and yeah, they're they're massive. They're brilliant. Um, so I can't wait to get them out. Brilliant. We we'll add them out. Yeah, yeah. So it's. And well, I put I put all your all your links down in the show notes too, so people if they haven't if they're not following Harry Baby to absolutely jump all over Harry yeah. Baby. How rude! <laughs> <laughs> I can't, you know, with consensual jumping all over that said hairy baby that was found in Kerry that time. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, look, that's that's the crack time. That's all that's, that's been going on. It's quite a lot, I suppose, since I would have talked to you last. I guess it's six or seven years ago. It must be. It must be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I, it, you know, when you like for for one reason or another, you're like, well, I, you know, when you're continuously seeing things from a company, you're like it's in the back of your mind. I hadn't seen anything from Harry Baby in a while. And I don't know why, because you're posting all the time, but it's my phone just being a bollocks, basically just going, no, I, Tom, I think you need to concentrate on moustache oil. And I'm like, no, I want to look at things that make me happy. So, yeah, but, 
And we, yeah, we look, we do so much stuff as well that isn't actually a t-shirt. Like it's, it's, we just put some stuff out just, just for the crack. Oh yeah. That's, 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 crack, you know? that's what I love about it. Like what you do, we do, we do, uh, we get lovely comments, you know, which is great. And it's really nice in this day and age as well to get some, some emails in from people who, who they just thank you for, for giving them a laugh. Eve, but you know yourself, even if it's the mug or whatever, like, but the mother has the mam's mug above, like, and l- like every time she never, you know, the way parents love running a joke into the ground yeah, yeah. seven million times every yeah. time, every time. Oh, oh, no, no, you know, and every, you're like, okay, I wasn't going to actually, okay, fair enough, you know, but it's her, that's her mug, yeah. and there's a bit of crack in that on a mug, like, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, Jesus, yeah. I know. For sure, look, we'll keep doing it. We'll keep going. I didn't think it would be here 15 years later, but it is. It is. I was a young man when I started it. (laughs) Actually, you're still fresh. You're still fresh. You've got your teeth and your hair. So what else do you want? (laughs) I still have my fucking hair. Yeah. God. Yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it was only ever supposed to last a couple of years. Genuinely. no fear you'll be back DJing with selling gear on underneath the, the desk or selling t shirts. Sorry, I don't mean gear. Sorry. Yeah. In this day and age, you can't say gear because that was something yeah. that That's you something wore you wore playing football. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, we'll keep going, we'll keep motoring on. It's it's um I just it's too much responsibility these days, you know, it's too much going on. You've gotten yourself into into I that. Give it up now. I can't can't get out of it now. Sure, nobody would employ me. So. <laughs> work for somebody else now at this stage uh, you're know. ruined you're ruined I had a few years back in the start where i thought jesus if i got out now i could still work for somebody yeah <laughs> no forget it no that's that's it's too late now so but look i wouldn't have it any other way now that's beautiful but look you know we, we've we've had the ups and downs i mean jesus i nearly closed the business twice did you though oh yeah i make mean, i've i'm very vocal about that uh i i've 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 talked at things over the years. I don't do that anymore either. But um, it's it's um, yeah. There were there were times way back around oh nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, when nobody had uh, anything. It was it was shocking. We we made horrendous losses two years in a row. I my bank manager said, um, "You can't sustain another year of this. You should probably pack it in now." Not my bank manager, my accountant, and. Uh, you know, you don't take those words lightly. You, t- you you sit up and listen. So, I had a year to salvage the bloody place. I did, thankfully. And did you what? In that fairness, was, that was Father Ted that that did that for me, actually. Was it though? Yeah, it was. I I got the license for Father Ted in 2011, and and. Uh, How do you go about getting the license for Father Ted, like? Do you are you talking to Channel Four? Are you talking to Graham Lennon? Yeah, Who are you talking to? Channel Four. It was it was Hattrick Productions in Hattrick, the UK yeah. and, and the, the writers of the show. Um, but um, at the time, I was doing Father Ted T-shirts. Yes, but just slogans, um, no association. You know, I just had down with this sort of thing and careful now on T-shirts. You know, and, and yeah, you know, they used to sell quite well. And I, at the time, we were. Jesus, we were hemorrhaging money. We were, I was contemplating closing the place and I, I didn't know what else I was going to do at this stage. And, and I kind of thought, should I try and make Father Ted official? There were no Father Ted t-shirts out there. Incredible. When you think about it, like, yeah. incredible. Absolutely. But now there's thousands of them and I have awful problems with, with copyright infringement. Oh, it's, it's a headache and legal fees and blah, blah, blah. But, but, that's for another day, but um, because we have to fucking we have to chase people all the time, it's a nuisance. But um, but any anyway, I, at the time, uh, I I had about three grand in the bank. Right. That's all we had. Right. That's the company the had three grand. Yeah, that's all I had, and and that was enough to pay the wages for about a month and a bit, and and I thought, what will will I take this money now and try and go after Father Ted. So I paid the lads for my visa card and my own visa and I took the two and a half grand and I built a one page website, registered the name Ted's Tees. Yes. 
got some packaging made from the supplier I used, branded identity, the whole lot. Um, got some shirts manufactured from the supplier I used and got a collar inserted on the back of the neck, all black shirts. Yes, yeah, yeah, white yeah. Collar and developed a team and arranged a meeting with Patrick Productions in the UK and went over and pitched the idea to them of building a, of selling a e-commerce website with specifically Father Ted themed ideas. Yeah. And the f weird thing about it was at the time there was nobody doing Father Ted t-shirts, but coincidentally on the same day I was in Hattrick Productions, there were two other companies in UK companies pitching the idea of licensing Father Ted t-shirts. What? Yeah. I, I couldn't believe it. Like, what? So, yeah. So, so the Irishness of me and the ideas, yeah, what won it over to the for the writers because where where the other two crowds had um, taken the small, far away, and down with this sort of thing, careful now, the really typical Father Ted isms. I had gone after the really odd ones from the episodes. What did you go after? Because you, oh, I, you, you were tapping into it there. Like if, if you've ever gone to, I'm sure you have been to like a father Ted, you know, these competitions and, and Ted, that, yeah. Ted nights and stuff. You'll see people will, it's Star Wars-esque, yeah. how deep they will go looking for a character to yeah. play. Like, like, I just, I, I had like, I had, um, I just a picture of a step ladder on, on the, on a shirt and down the side of it, it had keep your hands on the sides, you know. Yeah. <laughs> which is a scene from Funland, which yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I yeah. was absolutely hilarious. And and I have to say it in that tone, oh, keep your hands on the sides. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I had the the Funland scene as well. I had all the different rides from Funland on on, on a t-shirt, you know. Um uh I had Tom's car. <laughs> oh, I had, uh, uh, the spinning cat I had the spinning cat I had all the really obscure ones and they just thought that this guy gets the show perfect and because it was Irish as well and they they said that it we should be licensing from them so um so they granted me a license for for Father Ted um apparel t-shirts an exclusive license for ireland and and the uk and uh i went off no fucking money hadn't <laughs> <laughs> a fucking penny to my name because i'd spent it all on packaging and and course. Uh, website and registering a domain and all this carry on so then i had to i i didn't know what i was going to do so but anyway i landed home and i had to come up with about 10 grand to get a load of shirts printed and get the site populated and 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 get it up and out there and and I, within six months we had we'd gone back into um not so much profitability but we we were just kind of threading away nicely there and 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 uh, I could see it starting to come back bit by bit and 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 after that then after about a year it had started to go really well the TED stuff went really well and then I I pitched RT and got all the RT stuff on the back of having Father was, Ted as a license. Yeah, 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 yeah. Snowballed from there. You know, then we were we were being approached by people saying, I see you do Father Ted and and, and it just yeah, just kind of grew from there. So I kind of Father Ted to thank for a lot of our success back at the start, you know, um back when we were in the shit. You know. Well yeah, I mean you have to you have to if if imagine putting yourself in in the boot. Like how how long gone was Father Ted the show at that stage when Hattrick must have moved on with a bunch of things, but still going? Oh, yeah. we, we can still make money from a show we made years ago. Like, well, it, it had, um, I mean, it finished in '97, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, so I know, Jesus, um, 20 years, 22, 23 years afterwards, I decided to put some of them on t shirts, you know. So the show had pretty much been forgotten about from Hattrick's point of view i didn't think for a second they would talk of licensing it right so um 
Yeah, but now they have huge headaches because it, it's just copied everywhere. It's, of course it is. Yeah, of course it is. Uh, you'll find it copied everywhere. But, you know, the beauty about our stuff is it's, it's original that there are designs and it has the father Ted um, identity associated with it. So it's, yeah, it's good that way. But we've, yeah. we've had that license now for almost 10 years. Wow. Yeah. And it's, it sells every day. For, people buy father Ted t-shirts every day. Of course they, they do. Yeah. They don't tire of it. They just don't tire of it. And it, it is an absolute classic. Well, it's, it's still like, like I talk with I Pat Short on the show, like, and he says the amount of stuff he's done since done believables, but still to this day, yeah, every day of the week he'll get somebody saying something done believables, you know, from the nineties to add well, him. Darcy. Yeah. yeah, do you know this? This carry on, like, yeah. you know, and it's yeah. like there are certain shows that are so iconic like that that you can use, but but there are ones then that you know they come and go. Um, the likes of your Dairy Girls, fantastic show, but you won't sell merch from it in five years' time. No, no. You no, know, you it it has what it needs to be a great comedy show, but it, it's missing that something that's transmittable to merch. Yeah, yeah. There is a sauce for, there for is... a long period of time. It's funny that the father Ted stuff. I, maybe it's just because the phrase is so, so, so uniquely Irish and and yeah. The uniquely Irish you can continue to sell it for a long time and it passes on through generations my my daughter is 13 she watches Father Ted yeah there you go That's there you go at, at, at the, the humor you know there you, yeah I suppose Dairy Girls had one or two but I mean they'll milk it like the likes of the Protestant toaster one yeah the, that kind of stuff but I just don't know if 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 it'll be merchandisable in five years' time, I, I think it'll be forgotten about. It'll have moved on, and and I suppose what helps with Father Ted is that it's still rerun. It's still rerun, and, and it's frozen. Every day in a week, you'll find it on some channel like More Four or wherever. And do you know? Do you know a big thing too? And I was I was trying to get to the bottom of it. What makes it everlasting? And do you know what I mean? Trevor Morgan, Lord of Mercy, and passing away. It's a frozen in time thing. He, he didn't yeah. show up and all of a sudden was the doctor in... Yes, I know Ardell went off and did some stuff. Now he yeah. went and did stand up. But really, it was all about Ted. Do you know what I mean? And a frozen time with him. And yeah. I kind, of have, I kind of somewhat feel a little bit sorry for Ardell in a way that I think he's kind of been typecast, doesn't he? He's got that... Ted He'll be fine. His cle when, you clear, when you clear your mortgage off the back of something as a but result of it. There's that. There's, you that know. there's that thing to look at. I mean, yeah. that, I would certainly be fine with that. Um, you know, I know uh, we didn't do Mrs. Doyle stuff back at the start because it, she didn't want it. Really? Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, fair. Wanted to disassociate from the show, I believe. So... Um, Right, yeah. I mean, I, I, I know, I yeah. I have fear of being um, typecast. You know? I guess so. I guess so. But it's... Again, she probably would be typecast because Mrs. Doyle is such a memorable character, you know? Yeah, I mean, heavily made up too, like in saying that, I, I don't know, she'd be one of the few characters, I suppose, that could step outside of herself and not look one bit like what Mrs. Doyle did around the yeah. time when she, fi when she finished it. Yeah, I... Yeah. It's, I suppose it's horses for courses, but I don't, I, you know, it's a, it's the most humble. Would you, see, would you not see her as Mrs. Doyle if you saw her in anything else? No, no, I, I don't. Mean, maybe it's because I watched so much Father Ted over Maybe. I, 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 I can't get the picture out of my, anytime I'd see her on something, I, I'm almost instantly, Mrs. Doyle just comes into my head. But you know, I mean, I suppose there is there is a little bit, but at the same time, like when I watch a Matt Damon movie, the first thought I went, well, that's Jason Bourne. But yeah. at no point, yeah. uh, you it's know, it's iconic like that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't ruin it for me either. Like it's, it doesn't you know, ruin it, is right. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, I can, I can watch Ardell doing stand up any day of the week, you know, or. or, or what was he? He was in Trouble in Paradise. Show. He was in I, trouble. In, was he trouble in paradise I as well? I think that's the one show that I just don't know if I could watch. No, that no, no, it's diabolical. <laughs> but again, massive payday. He's happy out. Yeah, he's yeah. happy out. I guarantee you, he's happy out. Stand-up comedians tend to be absolute 
hewers anyway so they're like yeah whatever grant because i can go to a comedy club yeah. and yeah. completely profess in real life what i'm actually like yeah. Do you know what i mean and that's all that really matters yes you can call me or, or you know Dougal for the rest of my life on a newspaper or online but you can go and extra you know exercise those demons in front of actual people on a saturday yeah. night like agreed yeah agreed yeah very good Tara, this has been an absolute joy no problem you'll have some crack now trying to edit down an hour of this <laughs> Not at all. People want to know. People want to know the and this is exclusive because nobody gets behind to, to meet the great Oz. Nobody I, gets to talk to the great Oz. I, I, so. yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I just, I just kind of like to stay in the background as much as I can. I don't know. I don't know. If maybe I'm weird like that. But no, you're, you listen. It, it absolutely makes sense that you would because Harry Baby talks for itself. Like you know, you don't need to be up beside. It, it just shows. Irish humility, a proper Irish humility. You're well, not going. An lot, there's an awful lot of um, um, kind of these kind of micro brands that are popping up everywhere, um, and they just they love being in front of the camera and yeah. confessing how brilliant they are. And and you know, I I, I guess I, I guess in a way my humility kind of came from the fact that I nearly closed twice. Yeah. It, that to me said stop boasting. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Because the arse could fall out of this in two seconds. Yeah, right. At any time, yeah. yeah, you know. So when that happened to me, it was kind of a wake up call of kind of you know shut the fuck up now and and put the head down and run your business and don't be talking any of this nonsense now uh, publicly on Twitter and Instagram and whatnot and you know. Oh, you'd I, still you'd still get fellas going. I nearly closed twice, guys. And I still made it back. Oh, you know, and you're like, come on. <laughs> yeah, there would be. There'd be still fellas doing it going, I pat me on the back. Ah, uh, yeah. Right now. God, no. Just, yeah. So, I know. I can't win. I can't win. So, <laughs> no, the thing is that, no, I, I love the fact that, that the brand is out first front and you go, no, no, it's all about the brand and the quality of what I'm doing. Yeah. And if you want to find out, find out who, who's behind it. Like, but. Yeah. I don't see myself as being interesting at all. Just, just, it's just, just the brand. Keep an eye on the brand. That's that's perfect. Yeah. I'm bad. very, I'm very excited to see who these two new brands are that's coming on board with you. But yeah, we'll, yeah, have, yeah. we'll yeah. have to watch this space. Well, I guess, I guess they're um, they're not famous Irish illustrators. They're just bloody good. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. Like, you know, yeah, and, and you know, one fella's illustration style is is lovely and fun and 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 colorful and bright and they look great on shirts and the other one then is the one that we're collabing with um for our own designs to twist them into poster style let's say and brilliant kind of pop art retro style movie poster team esque that's an awful lot to take in but yeah uh, no and i'm i'm happy to great. yeah i'm happy to be back and wait for that Darren Murphy, this has been beautiful. Thank you very, very much. Not a bother. Good to see you again, Tom. And and, and uh, keep up the good work. We'll uh, we'll talk to you again soon. I'm sure. Let's not Legend. wait for six or seven years. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a million. All right. Slant, Tom.